Hello, hello, everybody out there in Facebook. My name is David Albertson. You may recognize me from all the YouTube videos and all the marketing we're doing here at CB Music Studios. And today I have the opportunity to allow Raphael Carpenter, another one of our great teachers, he's going to interview me. So, Raphael, introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm Raphael. I'm one of the guitar teachers at CB Music. I'm going to be interviewing uh, one of our other guitar instructors and uh, marketing managers of uh, CB Music today. Yep, I'm excited. Raphael, ask me a question. <laughs> okay, uh, let's get started. Um, so tell me a little bit about yourself, David. So where are you from, uh, first of all? So I actually am from Roseville, California. Uh, I went to all the local schools around here, starting at Crestmont, going to Ike, and then went to Oakmont High School and graduated in 06. So I'm a proud Viking. Uh, my parents, my mom is from the Azores, and my dad is from the Bay Area. And uh, they chose to live here after leaving San Mateo. And I really like this city. I've traveled a lot and kind of grown up around here and see things grow. And mm -hmm. then I went to Sac State after that. Uh, and actually, Sierra College, I should say, for those out there who are junior college uh, students. I studied there and then transferred to Sac State to study uh, music education, jazz, and also music business, which uh, mm. I'll tell you more about that later on about the process of going to school because I'm sure a lot of people might be curious about that. But yeah, my basic background is, is I'm from here. I'm a hometown boy. Oh, wow. So were you self-taught or did you have teachers from this area as well that you studied with? So I was fortunate. Um, I started uh, taking music more seriously when I was about 14 years old. Uh, I was a freshman entering high school and I had a lot of friends who were getting exposed to guitar and rock music. And I, my parents don't play. I come from a family. Actually, they didn't play their grandparents did, but they didn't themselves play. So I, when I got interested in it, my parents were supportive, though, and that was huge. It changed my life being able to have a mentor, and that's what happened for me. I took lessons first on guitar with Scott Allen uh, at Old Northridge Music there in Citrus Heights, and I stayed with him for about five years, um, so all the way until like 19, going to Sierra College. And uh, my parents, like I said, very supportive about it. Um, I went to lessons every week. I took his direction really seriously, but not only that, he, he kind of taught me what it was like to be a little bit more disciplined and, you know, opened my eyes to studying was kind of cool, to be truthful. He made me feel like, oh, I'm learning things about these modes, I'm learning new sounds, and uh, it was this, this cyclical thing of learn a new thing and apply it, and he was really good at giving me good examples. So I took lessons from him uh, all the way up till 19, went to Sierra College. I had lots of great teachers, Greg McLaughlin, uh, who I think is mm -hmm. the dean there, um, and I also studied privately with Rob Lemus, who's a bass teacher um, at Northridge. And continuing on, you know, I've had a ton of teachers. I mean, a lot of you, uh, you guys already might have seen that. I'm a credential teacher myself. So it's a, it's all those experiences are huge. I went to a national guitar workshop uh, that was going on. It was kind of like a summer camp for kids. And I was a student one year. And the next year, this is right around 19, same age, uh, they asked me back to be a guitar teacher, starting as an intern. So I was part of an internship for about three years. But, um, Raphael, I know you, uh, you actually have an interesting perspective because we met, I think, initially when I was a teacher at uh, Magic yeah. Music. <laughs> yeah. So you've seen me, uh, you know, I, we are your colleagues now, and you're a great player yourself and teacher. Uh, you, you could probably eventually speak on how, what it was like getting your first lesson for me and how I kind of evaluated mm -hmm. you. Right, yeah. So um, I remember, from what I remember, um, well, the first initial thing you wanted to do was uh, have a conversation musically with me because uh, you knew that I, I've had a few years of experience already. And I wasn't just, you know, at the basic level. So we, we started jamming on like, uh, I mainly only knew pentatonics and stuff. So you caught that pretty quick. You were just like, oh, well, I see you're doing a lot of pentatonics. That's good. But, you know, you can do more than that. And uh, I think it might have just been a blues or something. But, yeah, that was a really fun way to get to know a teacher uh, the first day. And it was very memorable. I still remember till this day. So... Yeah, I'm, well, I'm glad that I, I it piqued your interest, and yeah, I didn't end up becoming your teacher, and that's a good thing. You took a lot of lessons around town. I think you also took lessons with Matt Pinder, mm -hmm. um, and you know that's that's a thing. You'll notice a lot of the teachers here. Um, I mean, I'm not going to talk about myself, but I do want to talk about CB. Uh, a lot of us have studied all around town and even the world, and I think gathered experience from different teachers is important. So even mm -hmm. if you're studying with someone you might want to take a lesson or two from someone with a different perspective and for me right. even go ahead too, right yeah go ahead 
like a different uh, instrument, you can you know take lessons from like piano teacher or something, and still get like something out of it. That's really changes you, I guess. Oh, totally. I I um, you know, having took bass very seriously too. I was always a bass player as well as a guitarist. Uh, for me, those those two were kind of intertwined. It, it, I looked at them as the same system. Mm. Um, it was about pressing down a string and you know learning your role in a group, kind of like a brass player. I imagine I don't teach any wind mm-hmm. instruments. So I'm just a string guy. But I imagine that if you learn your place, you know, if you can play a trumpet, it's, it's a similar system. The brass instruments follow a similar system. And so you learn your place to play melodies, or if you're a tuba player, you learn your place to play bass lines. Mm-hmm. I kind of think of it the same way. Um, right. It was kind of when I went to Sac State that I started to, to branch out even further. Um, I was part of a string teaching program that was a Suzuki class method. Uh, the idea is to teach these kids uh, popular, or not even popular music, I should say there's a method book that focuses around learning certain songs to progress and learning the instrument mm-hmm. itself and yeah. using your ear. And so when I was there at Sac State, because I was doing string bass, as well as guitar studies there at Sac State, uh, I was around orchestra players. And I was around people who play violin and cello and viola. And so um, they invited me to be part of the class to start a bass section uh, for the orchestra. And I had a few great students there, which is kind of fun to see little teeny, little teeny, tiny upright basses, like quarter size, half size basses. Um, you know, people will confuse them for cellos, but they're different, different tuning. Mm. And uh, then I learned quickly that the teachers there also expected everyone to be able to teach at least the beginning levels on all the instruments. So it couldn't just, I couldn't just be a bass teacher. I had to learn to play violin and learn to teach uh, beginning cello as well. And that, that was something that wasn't part of my grand plan. Like you said, like you, it's a totally different perspective. It was totally different tuning, mm-hmm. learning to play with a bow. Um, those were all you know, big challenges for me as an adult. I started playing the string instruments like that at about 20. So um, that's something that I think a lot of adult beginners out there, if you're kind of shy about, oh, I think my time's passed to learn a string instrument, it's really never passed. And actually, I think adults learn faster. Um, they can get through the beginnings because you can understand and you're so, if you're focused, mm-hmm. right? If you right. have that focus, then you can learn. So when I, mm-hmm. when I, I did that for about two years, and uh, that's when I, after that program of coaching it with the class and having mentors, uh, Jody Boussoua, um Tim Stanley is a cello instructor, I think, there at Sac State. Um, mm-hmm. They did a really good job of just teaching me to really focus on fundamentals and how to get the kids to play. And over time, of course, I'm teaching it, I'm learning. And now... I teach violin. I play violin uh, professionally with my wife as the Albertson duo. I play guitar there. And um, I also will sit in with other musicians. But it's been something that, you know, you never know where just starting off to fit in with a group or starting off to, to just kind of learn the basics might take you. Um, exactly, yeah. So I'll leave off pretty soon. I'm almost done with all my teachers. God, there's so great, many great ones I've, I've been exposed to and been fortunate. Uh, I did my teaching credential just recently, last year, at Wood Creek High School, and I study with John Harmon, who does a commercial music program, which means they focus on rock, pop, funk, R and B, uh, and all of the anything even between. And these kids get a, the ability to kind of learn from a contemporary perspective to how, how a band works, how to set up a show, how to play these pop music, understand the form of these pop songs. Um, and it was such a great program um, and a great place for me where my heart's at. I love those styles of music to get the study and learn on how to teach that from someone who's been doing it for the last, I would say, at least 12 years. Um, and I also, of course, got to learn from Brad North in the band world and see how he teaches. And uh, it's been a really important, I think, phase of my learning as a teacher um, has actually been more recently by studying uh, formally and getting my teaching credential to teach secondary level music in high schools. So you just graduated too. I know. I know we interviewed you, and for those who didn't catch Raphael's interview, you guys should go and check it out on our YouTube series. Raphael just graduated. I think it was last fall. Uh, yeah, I graduated in the fall. Yeah, twenty nineteen. So yeah, and you studied under Savino, I believe, at uh, Sac State, um, who is a great mm-hmm. classical guitar teacher. He teaches a lot of early instruments. Um, mm-hmm. I, I know you probably have also studied with Steve Holm, which I have also taken a few lessons with Steve, um, who's another yeah. great local player and teacher. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I mean uh, that's about all the all the, p- the teachers I've had up to now. Other than my lovely wife teaches me all the time how to be better. <laughs> and so just being part of the music community and uh, you know getting good feedback and being around good musicians, I think is is really yeah. critical for anyone learning wanting to get out there to learn. Right, yeah, it's very inspiring. All right, David. So um, 
going on. Um, so what's your favorite? Uh, well, we talked, you talked a little about your instruments that you, um, you studied. So um, what particular instruments do you teach and uh, what uh, methods do you teach as well? Okay, it's going to be a little bit of a laundry list, so I hope you guys are ready out there. I know Rafael, is, is, you see me teach these in the studio um, while there was on-site lessons, but online, uh, I'm currently teaching uh, all the different types of guitar, so acoustic or electric guitar. I teach electric bass and upright bass. I teach piano, which actually I have hooked up right now, so you can see that I'm ready to go. Um, I teach violin, viola, cello, and string bass. I think I already said that one, but the string family itself. Um, I also teach the folk instruments, and that's been something that's just been kind of fun for me. It grew from my interest in Celtic music. So I have a banjo and a mandolin here that I teach, as well as ukulele, which is actually the one thing I really got, I got to throw out there. I'm just going to plug myself. I am the teacher for the group ukulele class. So for those of you who are looking not just for private lessons, but a way to get introduced to the instrument with a little bit more of an affordable cost, uh, check out my group class, which uh, I teach a group ukulele class on Wednesdays. And then, um, other than that, I also teach, you can see back there, Drums. Yeah. Well, that's well, been something that's new for me. Um, I just think that drummers get to look like they have all the fun. And I had to learn a little bit and, like I said, learn some fundamentals and get out there and start teaching. Um, it's always been an interest of mine ever since I was a kid. And so now as an adult, I get to pursue all the instruments I want. And my parents, uh, that was the one thing they weren't as supportive was the drums. But as I grew older, of course, and now I'm an adult, I have my own room, have my own setup. I even have an electric kit. You can learn very quietly um, and get started. So anyone interested in drums these days, they have a real advantage. The electric kits are great. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, so you pretty much teach everything besides uh, maybe vocals, I guess? Yes, yeah, so I've never been a talented singer, <laughs> unfortunately. And not only that, vocal instruction, I think, uh, for those of you looking for that, uh, we have lots of great classically trained teachers here who can really help you develop good technique. A lot of singers develop um, bad habits and things that I think hurt their voices. And um, mm. I think that for me, yeah, I'm not, you know, you might see me once in a while doing some harmony, but never been my passion. And that, that's why you notice I, that I only pursue things I'm really passionate about. <laughs> that's why all the string instruments have been uh, priorities. Mm. Awesome. So um, what was your favorite memory of a lesson you've taught at, at CB or, well, just in general, maybe? Yeah, um, I could definitely think of one with CB, and it's good to be back here. I I taught at CB early on. Uh, they started in 2006, and I taught all the way up until I want to say about 2010 or 11. And then uh, I took a break. I was in college pursuing the National Guitar Workshop, um, lots of other teaching and performing opportunities. But being back here, uh, this whole list, this whole year has been pretty, you know, nice to see how they've grown. But I will throw out a memory from early on. Um, a lot of you know that the previous owners, Chuck and Betty Price, their kids took lessons with a lot of the teachers um, at the studio. And so what's a trip for me is that I taught Chloe Price, one of their daughters, very early on lessons on violin. Uh, I mean, from scratch. She was just very focused, very interested in it. And um, I taught her Suzuki Method, and we she studied for about a year, and then I left. I left the studio, and she continued on, and I came back this year to see her teaching in the studio, which is, that's a trip in itself to see a student of yours who's gone down the path of learning the instrument, learning the craft, understanding the theory, and then wanting to teach it after doing all that um, is pretty cool. I was very proud of that, and I'm, I'm happy to see that she's still teaching and that uh, she's a great player. She, I mean, she's a great teacher and player too, so she's probably even surpassed me in certain ways um, that she's joined the, the classical realm and she's taken it further and she's developed a great community. I know she has a lot of cool, uh, teacher friends. I think Natalie Hagwood, obviously her sister plays cello too. Um, mm -hmm. she surrounds herself with, with good people and good musicians. And I think that's what I love most about music. And that's kind of like my best memory is seeing where you could start and where you could end up and how that affects you as a person and also gives you this outlet that you can, um, express and talk to people about. But yeah, it's teaching her from the beginning and in senior V teacher. It's a big one. It's amazing. Okay. Um, so what makes CB music special to you personally? So for me, the reason why I came back to CB, um, a lot of you might know me from another previous studio called Imagine Music Instruction, which is a great studio. I have nothing um, to say about them other than that things changed after I graduated from my credential program. And the reason why I chose to come back to CB was the teachers, which I think is the main reason why anyone should choose CB. And once again, you guys can notice I focus on community. I focus on being around good musicians and people who take the craft seriously. And this is the only studio 
that I've seen that has a level of educated faculty in the area. And I would even say even further, meaning um, I myself have a bachelor's degree in uh, music business, but really performance as well as, you know, you yourself, Raphael, have your BM in classical guitar studies. And, you know, Valerie Loera has a master's in, in her opera singing from Sac State. I mean, I could go on and on. Michelle Martin has a master's in violin performance. Uh, Christian Winger even has a degree in biopsychology. I mean, everyone here has that level of of either performance or even just the the study of the academic lifestyle. They've lived it. They understand what it's like to be a student, and it's important to them to be good teachers. So that's what makes CV special to me is that the, all of the teachers here have kind of pursued that same path. They have a similar mindset of of wanting to be well learned, well balanced, and educate people and share that with their students. Now it's important to me. Beautiful. Okay, so what technology do you inc incorporate into your lessons usually? Do you use like um, like a, a interface or a, a DAW usually to get some reverb in there sometimes? Yeah, <laughs> so uh, I have a lot of toys. Um, I would show you the studio right now, but it was just post work weekend and also I have performing at Wayne today. But I'll just tell you about it and maybe I'll edit something in clever here because you guys know that I'm also the marketing manager. So uh, I teach using, um, this is a Google Hangouts that we're on platform right now. So if you're watching us, how's it going? And I use an interface to plug in something called the Line 6 Helix. It's an effect processor for guitar, but I've used it for my piano. I use it for my drums back there. I have my electric violin that can plug into it, bass, guitar. All my instruments um, have that ability to plug directly in. So when you take lessons with me, you, there's no reflection. There's no room noise. You know, my wife could be cooking in the next room or a dog's barking. You're not going to hear that, which is also why I'm using this uh, microphone right here. It's going direct feed. Um, so I, I find that my online lessons have been very productive. And not only that, I can instantly record things for my students. Um, so right now I'm recording this interview. Um, I would do that as a recap for my students. And there's lots of ways now with technology, I think in some ways they're kind of better. Or I can incorporate eventually to my on-site lessons as well, where I can do a short interview like this. Or if a student isn't feeling well, but they're willing to take a lesson, I can meet them online at their time slot. So I'm using technology quite a lot. And it's, it's, been, um, it's been a little bit of a learning curve in the earlier part of this year. But now I think uh, I feel pretty strongly about being able to say, hey, I could turn a metronome on. <laughs> and, even, and have everything just ready to go. It's not like I have to hunt or I have to, to troubleshoot. Everything right now is set up for a really good live lesson online. Um, but yeah, I, would, I think Hangouts and being able to plug in directly through my interface, which is a Focusrite, a Scarlet, and um, mm -hmm. being able I just to... Picked up one of <laughs> oh, you picked up one? Yeah. Which one Which yeah, one did you get? Uh, the 2i2, I think it's called. The one just with two outlets in it, or the two inputs in it. So Perfect. Yeah, the, the starter one, basically. Yeah. And that's, and that's honestly, for people who are watching this, um, that interface is great for what we're doing here for an educational purpose but honestly it's great for if your your kids are going to want to create their own music they're going to want to apply things and be able to record using even if you just have GarageBand, which is a free software um on their ipad or a free software on their laptop um having an interface is a big one and it allows us to where you could have a similar setup as i do and it's not very expensive um how much did right. that cost by the way just out of curiosity it's about a hundred a hundred dollars you know yes yeah so go ahead uh, for recording, uh, just, you know, anything, if you have an idea you want to get out, and it's, you know, especially nowadays, uh, everything's done. A lot of people do stuff electronically and, you know, using technology to their advantage, um, you know, beats and everything, and that's all you need, <laughs> I mean, well, for recording, at least. Well, yeah, I think that the interface now makes it to where a lot of instruments are electronic that can plug directly in. You can get a very clean, clear signal. Like I said, I have my piano already plugged in. If, if someone said, hey, actually, I want you to work on a, I don't know, I want to hear a vibraphone. I could turn it on very easily and switch to different sounds. Um, it's, 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 it's extremely productive time for technology for kids learning music compared to even when I started. Oh, God long time ago <laughs> and and uh you people now can get apps and that's the other thing i forgot to mention for you guys um all the teachers here at cb have like i said we've troubleshooted things we've learned things and i've learned more about there's so many great apps out there to learn music that we can expose you to and make sure that you're finding the best free one out there too uh, for tuners for metronomes for music theory for rhythm trainers um all those kinds of new softwares and things that um that are out there make sure your kids are exposed to them 
make sure you guys are learning that. And then that's going to help you guys progress so much faster. And only that, you have something during the week to critique or help give you feedback uh, other than just us, which is huge. Um, if you're always like, oh, I don't, I don't know how good my timing is, you could, you could really find out pretty quickly. Um, or if you know how to spell chords or know how to spell scales, that kind of thing is, is something that I think CB is really great at and we've all learned to do. That's important from a technological standpoint too. Mm -hmm, definitely. All right, so um, what pieces do you have planned for your students for the upcoming virtual recital? Yes. Okay, so we just had one this past summer. Uh, CB does two recitals a year, and the next one's going to be a holiday recital. Um, so what I, I personally, I mean, I like Christmas carols, and I like the holiday tunes, but I think it's always fun to teach the students the melodies, and from a jazz perspective, try and put that melody over something else. Um, hmm. So a lot of times students have songs they want to learn throughout the year, and I like to see if I can incorporate both those ideas. Like, obviously, I want them to be able to learn a Christmas carol and be able to entertain their family and know that, but also learn to, to understand what key is that song in? How could I put that over something else? So uh, I, myself, as I perform with my wife uh, when the Albertson duo, um, will do that in the holidays where we'll play a song maybe like Wagon Wheel, uh, which is like the Darius Rucker version originally written by, I think, Bob Dylan. Uh, we take that song, and then I can apply that melody over it, and then I could have a kid take a solo and play Jingle Bells, for example, um, which I think is kind of fun. I think it, it, it makes it so that the students don't feel like they're just going through the motions of learning Christmas carols because it's the holidays, but all, but then they, they learn the theory and things behind it. So I think I'm going to do some things like that. And, there, and then I have some string students, and I have some nice arrangements for Christmas carols, too, that are nice. I do like uh, – I also like the trans Siberian Orchestra stuff, so I have some electric guitar students. So incorporating them to play together, or in this case, since it is virtual – uh, that focus right thing is going to come into play. You know, the interface and recording. Um, I could obviously record my students like I'm doing right now through talking with you. But having them learn to record and kind of evaluate their performance, I think, is important too. So I, I think it's going to be that kind of stuff. I think that'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Excited to see that. Um, so who are your favorite artists and uh, favorite educators of music? So, yeah, I, I talked a lot about my teachers already. I mean, Steve Homan was great. He's a great teacher. He's still teaching right now, too, for those out there who are looking for a very advanced jazz guitar teacher. Um, I, I, I think I've covered a lot of the teachers that I've known in the area. I mean, I've learned a lot. A lot of great musicians actually learn from their favorite artists, like you just said, by listening to records and learning songs and copying ideas off YouTube. And so I think for me, some of my, if I had to narrow it down to like five bands that changed how I play, uh, number one is going to be Led Zeppelin. Um, I, my parents listened to Led Zeppelin. It just rubbed off on me. So I really like uh, the different studio techniques and all the lead guitar and the way the band fits together and grooves. And I like I like some of that R and B influence as well as of course like the country and then and obviously just playing rock and roll. So I think I think Led Zeppelin. I, I just respect all the musicianship in that band and that 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 mm -hmm. definitely influenced me a lot. Like the way John Paul Jones plays the bass. And the way mm -hmm. that, you know, John Bonham plays the drums and Jimmy Page takes a solo or he's playing a rhythm part, like just that element of musicianship. And they take long improvisations and they, they improvise. I think that was a big influence on me. Um, yeah. I think uh, I liked Van Halen as a kid a lot, still do too. And um, that's number two. I really like similar, similar thing. I mean, everyone in that band's a monster musician. Um, and then coming from like more of a songwriting perspective, uh, I do like, of course, the Beatles. And I think that they're obviously great musicians too, but just uh, the... Right there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I know you're a huge fan, so I had to throw that one out there. Of course, everyone should should spend the time to study some of their discography because they, they incorporate more uh, jazzy or classical chord progressions and altered mm -hmm. harmony. And they, they the way that they, they recorded music is kind of the template for music today. I mean, that's what a rock band is, what people think of. They think of that, you know? Yeah, they pretty much were like the first real rock band, if you think about it. I mean, like, you know, they like really explored music as far as they could um, for that amount of time, a decade, and, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's one reason why they're so famous. I mean, yeah, and, and they're still there. I just watched that yesterday movie. Not literally yesterday, but there's a new Beatles movie that came out probably, I don't know, a few months ago on Netflix. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that with uh, Ed Sheeran's in it, and they have this songwriting battle, and it's funny because Ed Sheeran does write a song, but then the main character plays a beat another Beatles song and and he's like obviously just outclassed because there's just so many there's so many great songs um I'd recommend if you guys are looking for a fun music or music movie um the yesterday one was kind of it's pretty cool 
Um, but yeah, lastly, uh, this let me think. I mean, there's so many. I like rock and roll, obviously. I like blues. I love Steve Ray Vaughan. Um, I love B.B. Uh, King. Uh, there's there's just so many. And um, I'm trying to think outside because I studied jazz for a long time, too. Um, I found that for me with jazz, like I, I like a lot of the vocal jazz. Of course, most people want to hear like Sinatra. You know, mm-hmm. they want to hear some of those artists, the Rat Pack guys. But I think from a from an instrumentalist perspective, I mean, Wes Montgomery is pretty influential as a guitarist in the jazz world. And um, I think that, uh, you know, Tal Farlow, I think a lot of the bebop players. So I, I like a lot of different things. Um, so it's hard for me to think beyond. Once I get into that realm, it's the, it's the style. Um, I like certain artists for sure, but I think I apply those ideas of that genre and to what I, I listen to mostly myself. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, and other than that, I mean, I listen to classical music uh, occasionally as well. When I t- obviously when I have to, when I teach it, but um, for my time at Sac State studying classical music, um, I think all those things are important. A lot of people forget that, you know, you shouldn't just choose a teacher because they only are really listening to one thing. Right. Um, mm-hmm. I, especially, uh, for example, um, you know, you yourself aren't aren't listening to only one thing. I, mm-hmm. I think you'd want to study with someone who has a more open view of, of right. all these different things and how they can come together, and then can point out influences because um, right. all these all the songs and artists these days are taking huge influence. I would almost say they could be stealing in some ways uh, ideas and chord progressions and things. And you know, you could as a teacher, you get to go, oh, look at this influence on this person. Like this comes from this song. Um, like uh, there's an Ariana Grande song, is, uh, If God Was a Woman. Uh, that song is a chord progression from a Pink Floyd song. Really? Um, so <laughs> If God Was a Woman, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an Ariana Grande song. So it's, it's, I listen to that song and go, oh, it sounds like Breathe in the Air. Oh, Breathe in the Air. Okay. Yeah, so if you, you can put them together and go, whoa, like she took that influence and then you could kind of help cite sources. And, and as a teacher, you go, oh, okay. And then from the, even from there, like, that song is a Dorian chord progression, which comes from kind of the jazz world. Right, and you hear yeah. the, the keyboard uh, part right. on it is totally, yeah. you know, Bill Evans, or it could come from that kind of language. So, so yeah. So I think uh, I think I'm gonna let the rest of the artists be a mystery. You'll have to take a lesson with me. Take a take a trial <laughs> lesson. Uh, we could talk more about music. I could talk about my record collection, uh, which spans, like mm-hmm. I said, I mean Amy Winehouse, Amy Winehouse and Adele, a UK artists and pop to, I mean Queens of the Stone Age, Van Halen. You know, CCR, uh, the Congos, Young the Giants. I like a lot of uh, modern music too. So yeah, if you guys want to find out more about my taste, like uh, Raphael said, I mean, we talked. That first lesson was let's play a little bit, talk some music, and set some goals. So yeah, I think I'll leave it at that. Awesome. Okay, so uh, last question here. Um, so, what tips do you have for beginners, um, uh, beginner guitar players? It says beginner singers here, but I'm gonna assume. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I guess uh, beginner musicians then. Yeah, uh, I will say if you guys are looking for vocal instruction, they have it here. Uh, talk to Kier or Christian or Valerie Loera or Roy Demo. Um, lots of great vocal coaches here. I won't leave, I won't talk about that. And you can find out more about that too on this YouTube series we have called Meet the Teacher. Go ahead and click on those and learn. You can get some tips from them. For musicians, um, you know, since I teach all the string instruments. Uh, I think the key thing is developing coordination. And I think a lot of people can relate to an athlete. Um, a lot of people play sports when they're young. A lot of people can, um, can understand that discipline from that perspective of you know, showing up to practice and putting in some time on your own and working on your technique. Um, I think when it, when it comes to that, that's kind of the important thing is that a lot of people think music is the opposite or like the anti- antithesis. You know, this, they don't go together, but there is definitely some things about athleticism. Yeah, sure yeah it's like you're you know it's not only just the physical thing but you're using all your facilities that uh, kind of work into the coordination or uh, whatever um, you know mechanical thing you're working but um, you know it's it, it relates from up here that you're bringing down to you know, your body and your instrument right yeah. right and so i think that a lot of times people feel like they don't make progress when they're working on small tasks um i know with my students i focus a lot on technique in the beginning because i want to set them up to be to have the ease, the facility to move around the neck or to, to know how to pick or how, the, how that should feel, how that should look. And I kind of think of it like a golf swing, you know, like a lot of people can swing a club and yeah, you can hit the ball and you, you know, you could get it to go a certain range or do certain things, but you really want to be, if you want to be really great, then you have to take that swing and slow it down. 
and you have to sit and make sure that your the pendulum is correct. And it's the same thing I think about with guitar playing or playing with a bow if you're a violin player or cellist. Um, that that idea of slowing things down and focusing on it to where it's going to be accurate at that speed, which in music language we talk about tempo, um, is important. And it's it's probably the most overused piece of, of information, but I think that still applies to any instrument. And that's why people ask me, when they ask me, how do I learn so many instruments or how do I get involved with instruments so quickly, is that I'm, I'm very good at learning how to isolate an area that needs to be worked on and slowing it down and making it so that it works within this time structure, this tempo structure. And I think that's the idea of how you can get good quickly at music or anyone who's progressing faster than others is that person is able to take things in and out of context of time, meaning the beats. And they go, oh, on this third beat, they can isolate, oh, I have this problem with this, this group of notes or this rudiment or this you know, rhythm or, you know, or the pitches themselves. And they can work on it. And they can work on it at a speed to where they can get it correctly played and then speed it up to make it fit back in context. And being able just to isolate those things, that's what a teacher's for, is to help you when you're playing to say, oh, I noticed that there is this little area that let's talk about that. And let me show you how I would practice that. Or let me show you how you should, you should think of it so that you understand how to apply it and then re put it back in context. That's probably my biggest, the biggest tip on how to be a good musician. There's so many resources that um, it might feel like you can learn a lot online, but that's why people still take private lessons is they just don't get that interaction of someone being like, let me show you how to work on this um, in their in a, in a personal like okay yes we i've gotten to know you and i can i know what you're good at so i can help also tailor those criticisms which i don't i don't like call it criticism feedback uh on how to best improve quickly so that's that's my biggest thing right. is find those trouble spots slow down make sure you can play it to a click and if you make more than one mistake uh, then you gotta go slower and that's and correct your golf swing <laughs> Got to learn how to walk before you can run, right? So. Oh, it's a classic. That's a classic one, and it still applies. It. I mean, it's you'll hear that all the time. And like I said, a lot of people take music. Um, you know, you get an interest in it, and with music, it's probably one of the few things. Just like sports too, that's like getting throwing a basketball into a hoop. You know, you don't get any points if it doesn't go in the hoop. Um, so you gotta you gotta play. You gotta practice uh, the way that you're gonna want to perform and the way you want to play. And I've, obviously, everyone wants to score points. They want to sound good. So it does take mm-hmm. that kind of methodical. Um, practice and discipline. Awesome. Definitely. Thank you, David. Uh, thank you for uh, 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 answering my questions and uh, yeah, the interview and everything. So really enjoyed talking to you. Yeah. So thank you again, Raphael, too. Raphael is one of our instructors here at CB Music Studios. I interviewed him very early on. Um, you can go watch his interview on our YouTube channel. So thank you, Raphael, for interviewing me. My name is David Albertson. Uh, I am the multi instrumental teacher here and marketing manager as well. Uh, If you guys would like to get started with lessons, make sure you follow us uh, on our Facebook at CB Music Studios, as well as our website, cbmusicstudios.com. Send us an email at lessons at cbmusicstudios.com so that we can get you started in lessons. All right, Rafael. Have a good weekend. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye.